Well, in theory, this is pretty simple. I've got an engine mount here. I've got an engine, and my bodywork is under the engine, but there's a gap here. So the idea is a radiator there with air going through it, like that. And then there's going to be a panel which runs under the engine to about there. And the air is going to go in there, run along under the engine, and then out through the back of the car. And the exhaust is going to come down from the manifold and go in and fire, sort of, when my pin's running out, fire into the same chamber sort of sucking the air with it so I've got to make this panel which is sort of shaped like that okay there we are so it's got a bit of panel under the engine sounds simple it turns out it wasn't it was really difficult so in case you're wondering what I'm doing here I've got a piece of soft brake pipe and I'm using it to make a template so I'm going under the engine up to this loop here, the underside of that, um, to get a profile of the underside of the engine. Um, then I'm going to move it across to about here, do the same thing, same thing the other side. And then I can start to try and make a model, make a panel if you like, that will fit exactly under the engine. So this is my this is the claw, this is the, the kind of reverse buck for the underside of the engine. So I'm going to do this in one tray to do this in two parts. So I'm going to look at this part. It basically is a flat piece of metal that just goes down in a V and then back up to match the V of the engine mount. Then this part, because the starter mode's here, remember, it's like a big dish shaped actually extends further than this into a sort of curve which needs to be matched to the curve here somehow it's going to come out there so i'm going to do it in two parts so we're going to have a simple bent piece and then the more complicated bit would be this bit which is goes there so you can see what i'm trying to do here hopefully I've had to make a little slit, slit there, which I will weld and hammer down. Um, so you can see this will... Yeah, needs a bit of trimming, but it'll come up and touch this tube. So that's as high up as this end can go. So we've cut and welded this. I'm not trying to make it invisible because you won't even see this. So I'm just making it smoothified, re reasonably smooth. Uh, so it's time to test fit it again. Right, I've been doing a lot of cutting and welding aluminium. So you can see now this panel that runs under the engine, it ends up flush with the V-shaped engine mount. And if we go underneath, if I hang up, it's just held in place at the moment with the jack. You can see it starts on the engine mount and then it runs back and becomes more curvaceous until it ends right up by the banjo. I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to do here, but. <coughs> I've cable tied the this engine under tray to the engine mount and then the other end is held up with a jack um, up against this U-tube here and I've now got to kind of fix the tray this under tray to the belly pan somehow so I can start making sides for it because it's got to be sort of like an exhaust vent thing so 
I've got a wooden structure this side where I'm going to put two screws in from underneath and then mark everything so I know where the aluminium lines up with this wooden, temporary wooden structure. I got the underside of the car off and this stayed in the correct position because I've got this wooden piece here. Um, I've put some extra screws in, bits of wood behind to really fix it. And on this end I've got just got the blocks with the bolt straight through. So now the plan is cunning plan. I've got to fill the sides in. So I'm going to weld that, bolt, bolt it in. Um, I'm going to order a, like, a whole load of M4 nuts and bolts because I think I'm going to have to start off with panels that go down with um, 90 degree edges and I can bolt them up and use the minimum number of bolts through here. So I made some cardboard templates of the sides here which is really difficult because you're dealing with lots of different curves. Then I did them in aluminium. Um, so what I've done is I've just used tiny bolts for now in about four places along there towards the tail and then I'll put the centre section back in I'll then put the whole lot back on the car to check it still fits on the car and then mark out where everything lines up because I may weld the upper sort of pan under the engine to these side pieces Right, so there it is back in place. So what I'm hoping is I can just pinch these together and weld them. Like that. Yesterday I test fitted the under panel here with all this new gubbins in it. And of course it's hitting somewhere I can't quite get up all the way to bolt it on. Uh, I knew it was going to be a complete pain in the backside and it it is so uh, I'm feeling around where it's fouling things and just start trimming it back just to touch at this end um, and I might remove this wooden spacer panel thing let that sag a bit bolt it up and then rework out the height modify it if necessary right well I've done a little bit of tidying up here and here there's my finger there. So I've also hammered a little depression there where the corner of the transmission case was just touching. Um, so uh, put it back together, test fit it again, see if it bolts up this time. Right, well I know this isn't much to look at, but we're about three hours later. I've been trying to get this to fit back on and of course it wouldn't fit back on the car because things were hitting in hip interfering with other things and uh, I've taken it off about 10 times. I've hammer formed little bulges just where it needs to clear things like the sump corners. Uh, it was interfering with the brake lines here. Take a little notch out. It was interfering with the this is my inner panel. It was interfering with this YouTube that goes under this adapter, so I had a hammer form a little sort of depression there, so it cleared it. And finally, I got it back on. Oh, and, and I bent the corner here when I took it off a bit too rapidly and it clonked onto the floor. And then, of course, it wouldn't go back on. The bolts wouldn't line up anymore until I hammered that all back out. So, all in all, it's one of those days, but it's in. So... Now I'm going to take it off again, but another day, not today, and start tack welding in various spots, and then I do another test fit. This reminds me of that guy in uh, Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon, the guy with the claw instead of a hand. Uh, I don't actually need that anymore, so I might take it apart and put it into the scrap wood pile. I've been thinking about this a lot more as well. Um, these manifolds, they're a bit restrictive to gas flow, but they are compact and they're cheap because I've already got them. Um, so, and the exits are in the right place to go down into my plenum chambery thing with a 90 degree bend on the end. Now, uh, in terms of 
getting the suction effect to help draw air through the radiator I think it is actually better would be better to have three pipes three quite narrow pipes so you've got high velocity gas uh, jetting out through each side into the chamber that's going to be a complete nightmare to actually make um, so I think I should do this in stages bearing in mind time is rapidly advancing um, this is a stock engine and with a stock engine if you change to tubular headers the amount of extra power you get is very low because the exhaust pathway in the head is really really restrictive so reducing the restriction here in the exhaust side of things doesn't make a great deal of difference unless you open out some of the ports in the head first you can see i've welded tabs all the way along here that match means i can put bolt holes through the tabs into these side panels uh, so the little bolts so i need to sorry weld the top on now should be a bit of a nightmare and then i'll do the little bolts and then this whole inner thing will come off and then i can make the side panels here where the exhaust will go in Right, well about two days of work have passed since uh, I last filmed anything on this. So you can see I've welded all the way along here now. What a nightmare. Um, so the plan is I've got these tabs welded on like here and here. And they run all the way inside in there. So if I put my hand in... I can put a bolt through with a nut and span it on the other side all the way along and I'll be able to reach into the tail end once it's cut back slightly for the exhaust vent. So that means this is currently held down with some little tiny bolts. They'll eventually be removed, welded up the holes and you'll be able to just bolt them through from inside and then this whole section I'll remove if I need to change anything. Um, it's been a complete nightmare so the job now is to test fit it and hopefully it'll fit this time I had to make a cut out here a little recess because the starter motor sort of comes around like that um, trim this because it's not quite symmetrical that curve it's a bit wonky a bit needs, needs a bit cutting back well finally it fits without hitting anything. See there's the starter motor. There's a lot of trouble around there. There was trouble here which I managed to sort out. And here it's just hitting everything. This side was easier because there's no not so much stuff there. So now I just need to tidy up that curve at the back end because it's not symmetrical. Right, so that's what I've made. Basically, that's the underside of it. You've got to remember the bodywork here is not flat, it's curved. So if the exhausts come in the side here, fire that way. You can see there's a kind of big triangular channel down each side mainly. I'll show you that. And you've got to imagine it's curved. And so I think my exhausts, I'm going to bring them in. Uh, quite low down and just fire them down to about here and then this is this is it turned over so I've tidied this up now so it's symmetrical and um, we've got the tabs here see the tabs which mark out where it's and then I also need to cut cut this back a bit here but when you look there you'll sort of see a hole and you won't because you'll actually see the underside of this um, so it's going to look yeah it's going to be interesting so now I'm just cutting out 
holds the exhaust so the manifold's here so it'll go down instead of going 90 degrees then 90 degrees it'll actually go in at an angle and then straight which is why I've got an oval hole and I've done the same the other side right well I've cut out the rear vent and now I've welded up all the little holes I made for the screws which temporarily held that inner structure on so now I've got to smooth these down uh, well you won't see those but these ones as best I can and then I'll put it back together and see what it looks like okay I've got rid of them uh, there was one there there was one there and there was one there needs polishing but um, I've got rid of them anyway okay so that's it from the side I'm gonna put uh, a central let's, let's just show you it from the end so from a point of view of getting the air out and the exhaust out that's fine isn't it I mean there's, there's plenty of physical space uh, so what I'm going to do I'm probably going to make a kind of grill here I'm going to have some vertical strakes which come up one in the middle maybe you were here and here so it restores the curve so that when you look at it from the side it restores the kind of curvature so unless you look up close so it'll just take it take it from there to there even just the central spine would probably do it um, yeah so from a distance you can't really see what's going on here but close up you can yeah, so days and days go by with like n almost no visible progress and then suddenly it all kind of comes together so there's the exhaust inlets let's get a view through where the air so that's where the air will go in there um, this is the air coming in from the radiator and coming out there